much for coming on. Hey, my honor, I'm Jimmy. A I'm a big fan of yours. Uh, I was just telling everyone here, my friend Milty told me to check you out once, and just randomly, and I, I, I've heard of you, but I never watched you, and gosh, it was great. I felt so good. I feel so good every time I watch you. Just put me in a good mood. Well, thank you. I'm very honored that you watch, and it's great to be with you. I'm a big fan as well. I can't believe that you're a fan of our show. I'm so happy that you're a fan of my show as well. I love that. What, what, what other shows do you, do you watch? Oh, uh, I watch, uh, I like Duck Dynasty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like, uh, I can see that. Yeah, I like Wipeout. Like... Wipeout. Yeah, I love Wipeout. No, I love Wipeout. That's a great show. I mean, it's John Henson being just people just falling down. Just, yeah, that's always fun. <laughs> not too inspirational. No, it's not too inspirational, but yeah, it's still fun. Uh, you, you are, like, you run one of the largest churches. Uh, you, you, you broadcast in how many countries? About 100 countries. 100 countries. Yeah. That is unbelievable, isn't that yeah. amazing? Yeah, and it's... I never planned on even doing this. You didn't, right? You didn't start out as a preacher. No, I didn't start out. I started out behind the scenes at my dad's church doing production and things like that. But, uh, you know, you never know what God has put on the inside of you. Never dreamed I'd be here. Yeah, I mean, you started at 36, right? I did. I started at 36. My dad tried to get me up to minister for 17 years when I worked for him. But I thought, Daddy, I'm not a preacher. I didn't want to get up there. I didn't think I could. Really? I didn't think I could get up in front of people. I was too nervous. I was more quiet. But, you know, it's part of our message, Jimmy, that God puts things in you that you don't know you have gifts yeah. and talents and you know you, so you're you, nervous when you get in front of those people or, you, or well, not anymore i was at the first i was you very were? nervous yeah i first, wish we had clips time. i wanted clips of you being nervous oh, I yeah, love to see yeah. That. no what nervous. would you do how did you get over your nerves well you know the first few times i just held on to the podium oh. but you know over time <laughs> come out walking with the podium that's right <laughs> hi everybody uh, <laughs> uh and you t you tell a joke uh before each service i do which is great and what, what got you into that, just to loosen everyone up? You know, I really did. I, I never planned on doing it, but it seemed like when I went out there, they wanted to hear something funny, or I was, yeah. just, I was so nervous, and it was a natural thing to tell a funny story, and it ended up being a joke, and then I quit doing it. People started expecting it, but my jokes aren't funny like yours. I'm, mine are corny jokes. Oh, no, no, please. We, we love corny jokes. <laughs> yeah. we, we live, do you see the monologue? Yeah, I mean, but... <laughs> I could no, 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 <laughs> Rebel, Rebel, he, I don't think he could use, no, no, I don't think he could use any, I don't know if he could use any of those. Could, could, could you give us a corny joke? Do you have a corny joke? Oh, it's really corny, but I'll, 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 tell, I'll tell this everywhere. Okay, this guy calls the church office, and he says, I want to speak to the head hog at the trough. The secretary is offended. She said, if you mean the pastor, you're going to have to call him pastor, but you may not call him the head hog at the trough. He said, well, fine, but I was thinking about making a $5,000 do donation to your church. She said, hang on, Porky just walked in. <laughs> <laughs> that's not funny. That's funny. That's oh, great. Man. That's really funny. Uh, for any of you guys who haven't seen what this church looks like, I, I, this is just fascinating to me. Look at this. Oh, my God. Goodness, look at this. Unbelievable. Now, where is this? Houston? Houston, Texas. Yes, yeah, where the Rockets used to play basketball. The Ford McCompact Center. Wow, can you yeah. believe that, what you've become? This is just fantastic. I love it so much. And it's so entertaining. I mean, how many people is this now? Uh, 43,000 people. Well, that's, that's the combined service. I think it holds about 16 or 17. Oh, 16, yeah. 17,000. Okay, yeah. yeah. It's just, uh, it's just uh, how you can control that crowd is just amazing. It's really fascinating to watch and it's inspiring. Uh, but what is really good trivia about this is uh, this is where you had your first date with your wife in this building. It really is. I had season tickets there for uh, many years watching the Rockets. I grew up a sports fan. Uh -huh. And so uh, I asked Victoria, my, my wife now, on our first date to go to a Rockets basketball game, and that's where we went. Yeah, and it did, how did the first date go? It didn't turn out too great. No, it wasn't <laughs> no. good. No. <laughs> it wasn't what I was expecting. I'd given, I'd given my season tickets away, so I didn't have my fourth row seats. I had good seats back then, so I had to buy some tickets from scalpers. And that was back when it was legal, you know? And so I bought, the, I bought these tickets. Of course it was legal, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. that's right. I'm whatever, a pastor, yeah, 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 sure, whatever, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, back anyway. when it was legal, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Busted! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at halftime, they choose somebody from the stands to shoot from half court. Yeah. And if you make the basket, you win a car. So they happen to choose somebody from our section, way up top, and... He goes out there to shoot the basket. You know, nobody makes it from half court. Well, this night, the guy shoots the basket, and he swooshes it. He wins a car. Well, all of his guys, all of his friends are sitting around me. When he makes the basket, they jump up, throw their hands in the air, but they all had cups of beer. Yeah. And that beer went up in the air, and Jimmy, it was like slow motion. It was like I had time to pray. It's like, God, do not let that beer fall on Victoria. I thought, I said, God, I'll go to Africa and be a missionary, but... You know, I, I laugh because God has a sense of humor. It missed everybody else, but it hit Victoria and totally dripped down her face. And you were face, fine. You were clean? 
I was clean. Oh and my God. Yeah. <laughs> and she's drenching beer. She's drenching beer. Oh no, no, so no. So I got to take her home a good preacher's kid. Yeah. Here she is. <laughs> yeah, here's your daughter back. She's That's drenched right. in beer. That's yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> And then, and then now she's your, she's your wife. Twenty six and a half years. Twenty six so, and a half. Yeah. She's beautiful. I'm oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, here's your book. It's called uh, Breakout, right there. Everyone, go pick it up. Uh, Joel Osteen, right there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Come back. Hey, my pleasure. I just realized you're on the show, and and Lord is on the show. This is so cool. Rebel Joel and Lord is here. Of course, you'll bring the Lord with you. Um,